For decades, the United States was the clear global leader in digital technology. The biggest breakthroughs came out of American labs and the game-changing products came out of startups in Silicon Valley and Seattle. The conventional wisdom said that if you wanted to innovate, you needed to operate like us. You needed free markets, free speech, and democracy. But over the past 20 years, China has turned that thinking on its head. China has transformed from a technological backwater into an innovation powerhouse. Today, it's the only country that is challenging the United States for leadership in emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, 5G, and quantum computing. And it's done that while going against the conventional wisdom. It's maintained controls on its markets, tightly restricted speech, and it's become more authoritarian in its politics. So how did China do it? I argue that there were three key steps. The first step was creating a large, semi-protected market. When China built the Great Firewall in the 1990s, they did it because they were afraid of losing control over information. But over the next decade, they stumbled into a major side benefit. By blocking many American internet platforms, they created the breathing room for homegrown Chinese startups to get off the ground. The key here was that the firewall was never rock solid. China let Google, Facebook, and Twitter operate for a few years before blocking them. Other platforms like Amazon and Airbnb just got straight up beat by their local rivals. And Chinese entrepreneurs or scientists could almost always get around the firewall and check out what was happening in US tech. This meant that new ideas and innovations could enter China's tech ecosystem, where Western companies and their products couldn't just steamroll the local competitors. That takes us to the next step. China maintained ties with cutting edge researchers and companies around the world. These connections took a bunch of different forms. Chinese engineers have gone to work at companies like Apple and Uber. Chinese professors collaborated with their peers in Japan and Australia. And companies like Microsoft set up research labs in China, while Baidu did the same thing in California. People in Washington, D.C. usually see these connections as part of some master plan to steal American technology. And Chinese industrial espionage is definitely a very big problem. And the Chinese government has used its position as the gatekeeper of the Chinese market to force international companies to form joint ventures and to share technology with local partners. But the Chinese government hasn't been the main driver of these kinds of connections. Most of these ties were actually bottom up. They were driven by people in both countries that wanted to work together. And the biggest benefit that these brought to China didn't come from stealing, but from learning. Chinese technologists got exposure to the latest tech trends and new operating models. And when these ideas made their way back to China, Chinese entrepreneurs adapted them to fit their own local needs. This takes us to the final step. Once the Chinese government identifies a promising new technology industry, it pours a massive amount of resources into that field. This includes physical infrastructure, financial capital, and human resources. Now, from the outside, this can look really wasteful. It seems like it violates the sacred rule of markets, that governments should never pick winners. But on the ground in China, this can actually be a really effective way to force rapid technology upgrades. Take China's 2017 National AI Plan. When the central government declared that it wanted to make China into the world's number one AI hub, it set off a huge wave of experimentation by officials across the country. Chinese transportation officials created pilot programs for autonomous vehicles. Chinese mayors built sparkling AI accelerators. University presidents established machine learning majors. And police departments across the country invested tons of money in acquiring advanced surveillance systems. And lots of these projects failed. They turned out to be a waste of money. But taken together, they helped turbocharge the growth of China's AI sector. The government was essentially betting that if AI turned out to be a truly transformative technology, then all that waste would be worth it. It's still too early to say for sure, but that bet appears to be paying off for the Chinese government. Today, China is the only country that can directly compete with the US in terms of AI applications and cutting edge research. Now, to be clear, these three steps I've described weren't all part of some master plan that the Chinese government thought through and then perfectly executed. It was part luck, part planning, and it was a lot of hard work by scientists and entrepreneurs across the country. But taken together, all of that led to China becoming one of the world's most innovative countries. 
So what does all this mean for the United States and for other countries that are competing with China? A lot of people look at this and they think the answer is to cut all technology ties with China. And that might have been an effective strategy 20 years ago when China was still so far behind. But today the game has changed. China now has a self-sustaining tech ecosystem and it's actually the source of lots of cutting edge innovation. The US tech industry relies heavily on Chinese researchers who want to live here and work for American institutions. Cutting all these connections could end up hurting the US more in the long term. Instead, the US should try to learn from certain aspects of Chinese innovation and adapt them to the American context. We shouldn't abandon our values or start trying to create national champions, but we should experiment more with technology policy. We have to be willing to try different ways of fostering innovation and not be so afraid when one or two pilot projects fail. The Chips and Science Bill of 2022 is a great start. It invests serious money in catalyzing America's semiconductor industry and it lets the National Science Foundation get a little bit more creative in how it funds research and development. Other recent government investments in supporting green technology are another example of us trying new things. Now, some of these investments are inevitably going to flop. We have to be willing to accept that and not turn it into a political scandal every time a government investment doesn't pan out. If we really want to level up these industries and compete with China, we've got to be willing to make these bets on American innovation and be confident that they will pay off.